Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first virtual Green Fair uh, hosted by the Hawthorne Environmental Commission, and we're really excited to have everyone uh, join us tonight. We are uh, streaming live Facebook for the first time. Um, our presenters are from the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission. But before I do that, I have a little polling question because I want to get an idea of how did you hear about the virtual Green Fair? So if you can just poll in and answer your question, how did you hear about us? Facebook, Nexel, uh, Nexel, tap into Hawthorne or the Hawthorne Green Team webpage. Just curious to see how you heard about us, about tonight's program. So let me launch the polling. We'll give it about a minute. All right, there's a total of 15 participants. Raina, is this streaming on the Hawthorne community page or on your page? Hawthorne Environment Commission. Is it streaming? I'm checking, but it might just be my user problem that I don't see it. sure if it's working or not, but we'll give it a shot being recorded. Okay, so let's end the poll. So it looks like um, we've got Facebook at 38%. We've got Nexel at 46, TapNet 15, the web page 31%. And I know there's some chats here uh, let me share the results to everyone. I see there were some emails. I'll put that on the next time we do a poll. And uh, Assemblywoman, excellent. Well, welcome. We are um, launching tonight. We're going, we have 10 programs. We'll go over that at the end of the presentation. Um, and all the information is posted on our Facebook commission uh, green team page, as well as uh, the borough's website on the green team. So let me introduce uh, Rhea Labosco, who is the chair of the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission. And I have Jay Van Hoff and Kevin Alberta, uh, who is our arborist for Hawthorne. I'll turn the program over to them. Um, just a couple of housekeeping, just if everyone can mute themselves while the presentation's going on, uh, that would be great. We'll take questions at the end. And um, Drea has an announcement to uh, about one lucky person may win something tonight. So I'll turn the floor over to uh, Drea. Thank you. Thanks, Raina. Just before we get started, thank you everyone for joining us tonight to learn a little bit more about the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission. And we're very fortunate to have Kevin Alberta with us as our licensed tree expert. Uh, Kevin is, is the individual who is hired by the Borough of Hawthorne and works directly with the residents on tree remediation, you know, whether it's a tree needs to be removed or pruning. So we're, we're glad to have him with us. For the folks that are on tonight, um, a lucky winner will get a, a newly minted Hawthorne shade tree sweatshirt. We'll hold a question. Um, at the end of the meeting that relates to the presentation that Jay will review with us. And um, we will designate a winner with the correct answer at the end of the meeting. So we won't tell you the question now, so you have to pay attention. And um, the quality is lovely and everyone who has one of these sweatshirts really enjoys wearing it. So with that, thanks Raina. Jay, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thanks, Drea. Yeah, I'm Jay, a um, member of the Shade Tree Commission. I think I've been a member for a little over two years now. We do, we do like to start our presentation with a, with a quote by Warren Buffett, and that's someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And if you think about that, we do all enjoy 
the shade, especially on, on, a, on a hot summer day. But we here in Hawthorne, we do love our trees. So you think, why do we need trees? Well, we need trees because trees produce oxygen and they directly contribute to meeting a town's regulatory clean air requirement. And important because we do all need oxygen to survive. And when we have access to trees and green space, it promotes physical activity, it reduces stress, lowers blood pressure, and relaxes brainwave patterns, which I think was very important this past year, as a whole lot of us spent a lot of time outside during this pandemic. And statistics show that urban landscaping and trees help lower crime. And I don't know how many of you think about our trees being a natural air conditioner, but when we are, you know, on that hot summer day and we're looking for a place to sit, you look for that place to sit in the shade because it's a lot cooler there. And tree windbreaks can reduce residential heating costs up to 15%. And homes that have trees on their property, they sell more quickly and are worth five to 15% more. Trees also enhance economic stability. Another benefit of trees is that people walk and jog more on a shaded street, which I love this because it does encourage interaction with our neighbors and it improves that sense of community. Well, we spent a lot of time outside this year a lot of time in our yard, a lot of time walking. I think I met everybody on my street this year and that wouldn't have happened had I not been outside enjoying that. So what is the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission? Well, we, have, we were established in 1942 and the shade tree is the governing body for the regulation, planting, care, and control of shade and ornamental trees and shrubs in all the municipal parks and streets. <clears throat> when, when it comes to your, your street, we're in charge of anything from the curb 10 feet into the property. We are not, the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission is not responsible for any trees that are beyond that on your private property or in your backyard. So there are five members and two alternate members who are residents of the borough of Hawthorne and are appointed by the mayor. That's what makes up the Shade Tree Commission. And each one of those commissioners serves a term of five years and the alternates serve a term of four years. I happen to be alternate number one. So some of the things that we've done in the last four years, we're in charge of all the removals and of the pruning and of replanting trees that are taken down. So in the last four years, we have removed 583 trees, we've pruned 772, and we have planted 276 trees. And I believe that there are a lot more to be planted this coming spring. So since I've been on this committee, I have heard that it's, it's a little hard to get in, it has been a little hard to get in touch with the Shade Tree Commission, but since I've been there, Andrea has done a wonderful job of this. We do, it is a lot easier to access us now. We have a, a part-time administrative assistant who works directly with the resident issues. We have a specific shade tree email address, as you can see there, Hawthorne shade, shade tree at hawthornenj.org. And a lot of the frequently asked questions are and answers to them are available on the website, which is hawthornenj.org slash shadetree.cfm. So since I've been on this committee, I, I am actually, I'm amazed at how much work actually this committee does do. This, these people that are on this committee, we love our trees and we're, we're very active in our community when it comes to the trees. So in the, in the last four years, we've developed a process of tracking tree remediations and removals from that initial call with the residents through the completion with the contractor. Like I've said before, we hired an administrative assistant. We hired a new certified tree specialist who's, who's on there, Kevin Alberta. And I worked in the nursery industry for 15 years. So I thought I knew a lot about trees until I met Kevin. If you have a question about a tree, he knows the answer to it. He is very, very smart. We also reorganized our monthly meetings to include impactful and informative content. And I can, and I can speak to this. We're, 
we're very active and we don't want to just be a committee that doesn't do anything. So in that, we move the monthly meetings to evening hours to allow more access to the public. We also work directly with the borough work, road work contractor. This is important to have a good relationship with them so that they just don't feel like they're free to do whatever they want. We've also implemented a tree inventory. And I know Kevin has spent a lot of time going around logging in, I think almost all the trees that, that we're responsible for. We're also Hawthorne is recognized by the Arbor Day Foundation as Tree City USA. Andrea, is it? 25 years we've been 27 27, 27 years 20, we've been 28 yeah 28 years we've been rec recognized as tree city usa we also complete the required training for commissioners and one borough employee and as you can see in, in the bottom corner there we created a new branding logo and we all are we are very active in borough events one of the things that we did do this past year is we gave away how many saplings did you give away at paul's uh, this for, for just at Paul's was about a thousand. About a, a thousand saplings. And it's a great way to get, that we get interaction with the community, that they get a little, a little sapling and it's just, they can come in and ask questions. We're also very involved in celebration, which did not happen this year, but we also give a tree away there. And we're always at Hawthorne Day. So when I, I moved to Hawthorne three years ago. One of the reasons I moved there is because of the, the tree-lined streets. And it was, uh, you know, always was looking for that, you know, you know the, the pictures you see with the trees that go over the top. And we at the Shade Tree Commission really want to have that kind of look. So each year we, we hopefully can plant a bunch of trees. And like I said before, they're placed in the right of way, which is usually in between the curb and the sidewalk. It's important for you guys to know that we like volunteers to give us a call up and say, we would like a tree. That makes our job a lot easier so that we don't have to go around and, and find those vacant spots. And you can see the difference in the picture here of a tree line street. And I think it's, it's the, the same street after the trees were taken out. There's a big difference there. We are um, often a little bit in, in the news. So there are some tap in tap into articles that, that you can go to. We um, did plant a tree at Hawthorne High School. It was a Cedar of Lebanon, which is doing very well there. And you can just look through these here. And so if you want to go on to tapinto.net and, and look us up, that would be great. These are just some pictures of us in the news. I was we did plant a thousand bulbs. I think half of them went to the schools and the other half we planted around the municipal building and at the library. Um, so I'm excited to see what that all looks like in the spring. Would you like to get the kids involved, especially on Earth Day? And I don't know if you want it there, we do have a, a trifold flyer that, that we can hand out and, and that we do usually hand out when we, have, when we do do events and that's part of that here. And uh, those, those articles are also posted on our Shade Tree website for, you know, you can just click on a uh, link and get the same information as well as some other things like one of the frequent, frequently asked questions or concerns by residents are about limbs or little branches falling from trees. So we've, we've tried to put content out there that really addresses some of the main questions that we hear from residents. So yeah, so in closing some important reminders here that we do have a meeting the first Monday of every month at 7 p.m. and we usually do meet in the second floor of the borough, but due to the pandemic, we've been doing most things on Zoom. There again, you can contact us at the Hawthorne Shade, at Haw Hawthorne Shade Tree at hawthornenj.org. And please hit up the website there at hawthornenj.org slash shade tree .cfm. Thanks, Jay. You got it. Thank you, Drea. Before um, we introduce Kevin, and, and I hope for Kevin to talk a little bit about just the kind of the beginnings of when a, when a resident has an issue with a tree, uh, 
you know, it gets logged with the with the office in the borough hall to Kevin reviewing the tree and then a work order being submitted with our contractor to completion of whatever work needs to be done on that tree. I wanted to just take a moment for those who are on the line. Are there any questions about the shade tree as an organization as a whole? And Raina, I don't know if, if that's, uh, people can just talk or they, they need to put that in the chat. No, they can um, unmute themselves and uh, talk. I think it would be beneficial if we could go over um, the Q&A that you put together, Drake. You've given that out to the residents for the Green Fair and Celebration and Hawthorne Day, because I think those are the basic questions that the residents have, and you did a great job with the brochure. Um, sure. You want it, um, Jay, can you scroll back down? Or back one. up? All right. So, you know, over time, uh, since I've been a chairperson for the Shade Tree Commission, I, you know, I think there's been a lot of just questions and um, from the residents about what, what it, you know, what exactly does the shade tree do? Who are they? Uh, I also, in the first year of my tenure, noticed that we were getting the same, let's say maybe dozen type of questions. So the, the picture that's here on the screen, uh, there, there's two forms. One on the right, or sorry, uh, left-hand side, is an overview of the Shade Tree Commission and some like little articles. So it's more or less a newsletter. On the right side is the trifold, which in real life or on our website is two sides. And some of the, the key questions that folks ask are, you know, uh, the shade tree plantings, which Jay touched on. So we do do plantings each year. We ideally like to plant twice a year in the spring and the fall, but for various reasons, I mean, sometimes they're just, there's just administrative issues that come up. And um, for the past couple of years, we've been able to plant at least once a year to the tune of about 60 to 70 trees in each planting cycle. And as Jay pointed out earlier, I, you know, the best case scenario is that we have residents who come forward and ask for a tree. Um, but if that is not the case, in order to maintain the canopy, to replace the trees that have been removed for various reasons, whether it's infrastructure issues or perhaps the life of the tree is, is done or maybe there was an act of God, so to speak, with a storm you know, and the tree needs to be removed. We're looking for every tree that we remove to at a bare minimum replace with one tree. So the trifold talks a bit, little bit about the, the tree planting process, whether a resident asked for a tree, and if we don't get enough residents asking for a tree, we do look for areas that are in need of trees. So the right of way that Jay referred to, that, that 10 feet um, between the curb and into anyone's lawn, it's really, you know, whether it's a tree or a sign or a sewer line, you know, it's an area that the town has designated as a space to, you know, put in whatever <laughs> Was needed for the town. Um, sidewalk walk repair is a is a really big item that comes up with us. So while Shade Tree doesn't necessarily oversee sidewalk repair, there is a connection between um, like building and code and Shade Tree. So the sidewalks, while they are in the right of way, if they need to be replaced, if they're cracked, if they've been upheavaled by a tree or whatever the issue may be, there is a process document that is out on our website that talks uh, in terms of both the contractor and the resident from soup to nuts. You know, I have a sidewalk that needs to re be replaced. I need to get a permit. I need to do X, Y, and Z. The Shade Tree Commission is then pulled in to go and look at the tree, if, if there is a tree and to designate whether the tree needs to be removed or perhaps instead of a straight sidewalk, a round out can be put in. A round out means that, you know, instead of a, a sidewalk that's just a rectangle, it actually bows a little around the roots of the tree. So it preserves the canopy, like in the picture that Jay showed earlier, there's some, there's a lot of mature trees. And instead of taking out the tree, perhaps there's an alternative to the sidewalk 
to help maintain the canopy, maintain the cozy nature of the of the neighborhood, and then address the sidewalk issue as well. Um, some of the other items that are out there are uh, just general. Uh, we talked about tree remediation. So with a with a shade tree, a resident it does not need to take care of the tree. The tree is the responsibility of the town. So what does that mean? It means that if the tree needs to be pruned, if the tree seems to have some sort of you know bug or maybe some sort of infection, those are that is the responsibility of the Hawthorne Shade Tree Commission. And so. Um, the document will give you instructions on how to simply contact us, whether it's by phone or by email, and then we'll step through the work order process. And I know Kevin will talk more about that, but essentially when a resident request comes in, it is logged through a work order process, which is a, which is a standard process for most work in town that's done through the DPW or through the you know, borough administration. And then we'll, we'll talk about next steps, how Kevin comes out and what, what happens after that. So there's a lot of good information there. Um, again, these are the most frequent questions that we've had asked over time. And this trifold document, there's also a, like a PDF that can be printed out, provides the same information. Um, actually, that's one of my agenda items for this year is to just get that updated. So it gives you everything from who is the Shade Tree Commission to plantings, to sidewalk repair, to when are our meetings. Does that help, Raina? That was very helpful, Drea. I just uh, shared the Shade Tree Commission webpage as well as um, that document that you went over the residents' questions, which is right underneath on the right-hand side, related documents, residents' questions and answers of July of 2019. So, I, I, um, also, I also want to point out, and, and thanks for sharing the link, for, for those who haven't visited our website, uh, we, we do try to ma maintain the website as much as possible. And I'll just go back to the first slide that, or second slide that Jay talked about. The commission is- ahead, Jay. That, yeah, that Jay talked about. We, um, we, we are a group of volunteers that have been appointed uh, by the mayor. So a lot of what we do is, is all volunteer hours and, uh, you know, and, and things like updating the website are part, is part of what we do. So we update it to the, to the best of our abilities um, through, the, through the borough hall. Uh, there, is a, there is a section of our website that is our year in, in review. So since 2017, we've been posting our accomplishments each year. And I started doing that really because I thought it was important to get out to not only the council, but to the residents, all the good work that the Shade Tree has done. And over the course of time and how we've revised our process with the residents, how we're handling plantings, the uh, community work that we're doing, whether it's through sapling distribution or planting trees with the boys, boys, uh, the Boy Scouts or at the high school or any of our other grammar school locations, we felt that it was really important to share that good information and that good news with the residents. So, um, you know, I would encourage folks to look at our accomplishments because while, you know, sometimes it doesn't seem like things are happening, but in fact, we actually have had a lot of good momentum over the past four years. Great, and I just I just shared on the screen or the uh, annual reports, it's on the left-hand side, and you can read uh, going back to 2017 that Drea just said. So I think this has all been great. Any questions from the attendees? Jay, you did a good job. Thanks. I'm going to stop sharing now. Yep. All right. So. Oh, there you go. Now we can see the, right. uh, the website. Yep. Okay. Raina, uh, yeah. So, so definitely for the folks who have an interest in going out there and looking, I, I you know, uh, our, our accomplishments are our pride and joy. So. That's fantastic. Um, you want to turn the floor over to um, Kevin? 
Yep. Um, Kevin, Kevin, uh, Kevin, you can introduce yourself. Kevin joined us in, uh, Kevin, was it 2017 or 18? 2018, right? I believe it was 18, yes. Yeah. So Kevin, uh, Kevin and I work very closely together. Uh, I very much have enjoyed our working relationship and he's been an incredible asset to the Shade Tree Commission as well as the borough residents when it comes to trees. Uh, he does a lot more than just what we're talking about uh, in terms of shade tree. His uh, reach on, you know, tree related issues does extend to the town as a whole. So if there's things going on at Borough Hall or with the Environmental Committee, he's, he's not just working with the Shade Tree Commission, but is actually a specialist that we can tap into for many of many reasons within Hawthorne. So Kevin, if you could maybe give a little bit of your background and then um, it maybe give us an overview of the tree remediation, you know, when, when you get a work order to working with our contractor uh, and your maybe some, you know, what you talk to our residents about when there is a tree issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first we'll start by, you know, thanks for everyone coming by. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a webcam, so I apologize about that. But um, there's a couple of things I wanted to touch upon. But uh, first, I'll introduce myself. I'm a New Jersey tree expert. I've uh, been doing this for roughly all of my working life. Uh, started with Downs and continued on from there. Now I currently work for the US military. And I also do a couple of municipalities and help with odds and ends, such as work orders and evaluations. and. Uh, basically just helping out with the bids and the plantings and the remediation. Um, so I'd like to touch upon a couple things. First would be uh, the plantings in town. Kind of like Drea and Jason were uh, explaining, we have, uh, we have a new system we're trying to implement. We're basically kind of doing the, uh, the footwork that was never done trying to get trees that not only are species appropriate for where we're planting them, but we're also putting in consideration utilities such as wires that are unfortunately not thought about a lot. So we're not putting oak trees under wires. We're, we're putting ornamental trees where we can utilize space under wires. And then we're putting shade trees where we can appropriately have a shade tree that will live a longer life than just getting hacked away at. So we'll work work the best we can with uh, where we can plant as far as right species, right place. And then not only with that, but we'll implement root guards, which will prevent roots from going underneath the sidewalks directly. So it kind of extends the life and the protection of the slabs. And then we also do a uh, watering system with the with the contractors. So we have them filling up those green bags, which are gator bags, those hold water. Usually a couple days, it will, uh, it will kind of, you know, drip out and extend the life and the, uh, the percentage of success rate with them. <clears throat> as far as, um, as far as planting, unfortunately, you always try to achieve a, a higher ratio than a one-to-one, -one, you know, removal to planting. Um, you know, we're trying the best we can, like Drea touched upon, the, uh, the, more, the more residents that we're looking for trees, the better. We'll always work with them and, and try to get something that they'll not only enjoy, but something that'll work well for the town and be here for many years so everyone can enjoy them. Um, and from there, I'll go with you know, the concerns of town trees. As far as work orders go, whenever a resident's concerned about a tree, it doesn't look right, something came out of it in a storm, or just general pruning, it's getting overgrown, coming near the roof, whatever the case may be, um, we, we invite everyone to take a look at your own trees or trees around the neighborhood and let us know if there's something going on that we haven't picked up on already. We'd be more than happy to come out and take a look at them right away. It's a little bit of a, a system as far as sidewalks and stuff like that go, if there's an issue with the sidewalk slab lifting up, you know, we always try to go the, the route of 
having a sidewalk slab lifted and look at the roots first to see if there's not only something we could possibly prune off the roots safely to adjust the slabs so they'll be level, but if we can also install some kind of guards, whatever the case may be, but we always try to extend the life of the tree first rather than just go ahead and cut them down. And Kevin, Kevin, can I uh, jump in for a second? I just want to go back to the, uh, you know, inviting the residents to let us know if there's a tree issue. For the residents that are listening and have concerns, while we do get a lot of resident in inquiries, right? So that's, I would call that a reactive inquiry that we are reacting to the request of the residents. Over time and with Kevin's leadership uh, and expertise, we are beginning to become more proactive. So Kevin, maybe, you know, maybe we could talk about like our small pruning initiatives and we did a large sure. pruning initiative downtown of several years ago, but you know, I, I think sometimes there's the uh, residents may think that we only react to uh, tree issues, but we are moving towards being proactive in terms of maintaining the shade trees. Sure, that's, that's, a, that's a great thing to bring up too. Um, starting this year, we'll, uh, we'll implement whole street prunings going Basically, for example, uh, our first street we're going to do is Lafayette, clean up all the trees, prune them, get all the dead wood out of them, make them aesthetically pleasing and also jogger friendly. So we don't have any low branches. We don't have to worry about you know, getting hit in the face while you're going by at night. And then we're going to slowly work on the main roads and also streets near schools and uh, high traffic areas for pedestrians. So those would be the main targets for this year for whole, whole street prunings. And in that, if there are any trees that are diseased or starting to fail, removals will be implemented and then they'll go back on the planting list so we can populate these streets. And for uh, the folks that are tuning in tonight uh, and Jay had mentioned earlier, we did take on an initiative uh, with Kevin spearheading it to log all of the shade trees in town. So we uh, are using a tool called iTree, which is an internet-based um, tree inventory system. And Kevin and his team in, in 2019 uh, literally logged and um, downloaded every street tree that is under the shade tree realm in town. It took about, it was about a two to three month initiative, I believe, Kevin, and to the tune of over, just slightly over 3000 trees. Okay, and so, so part, part of the value proposition of doing the iTree inventory is that, you know, Kevin's talking about trees that need to be pruned or removed. So um, again, ideally when the work orders are coming in, they're going down the, the tract of, you know, whatever has to happen to the tree happens, but it's also being logged into our iTree inventory. So that way, should we need statistics? Do we need to know where trees were removed and, and can be, there's replanting opportunities? Um, that's really the kind of the highlight of having the inventory to help us maintain our urban canopy. So that's actually a really good uh, segue to the the next thing I was going to kind of bring up, but to touch upon that more, the uh, iTree database is a, uh, a shared program with the, uh, the state. So basically what we do is me and my, uh, my team, we went around, we measured every tree. We did a health inventory of it, a health rating, and went from there as far as species analysis, uh, diameter at breast height, and so on and so forth, just to document everything. And then this way it all goes in a database and the town can literally look up every single tree, whatever, wherever it is, as far as address or right of ways or, you know, however you wanted to, to do it. So this way it's always on hand. Um, so for a good example, a, a use of this would be right now, the country's dealing with a pandemic other than COVID, which is the Emerald Ash Borer. 
This is a tiny little insect that's roughly the size of a, uh, a Tic Tac or a little larger, and it's metallic green. Um, I've never seen one in my whole career of doing trees, but you can see its, uh, its path going everywhere. So basically, it's a, uh, it's a beetle that enters through the, the bark of the tree where it's thinnest, which is up in the canopy. It burrows underneath the bark, feeding on the vascular tissue of the tree, laying eggs and going, working its way down the tree. For, for trained eyes and un, untrained eyes, it's very difficult to see this. Um, it's very overlooked, and once it's overlooked, it's usually too late for the tree and it's going to die. So fortunately, there is one little thing to it. In the winter, woodpeckers are running out of food as far as insects, and what they do is they rip the bark off the tree, exposing the first layer of the cambium, which is the vascular tissue, which the beetle's feeding on. So if a town had a lot of ash trees in their burrow right away, they could look up all the existing ash trees and implement either a remediation program of, of removing them and replacing them or treating them with some kind of systemic pes uh, pesticide. But, um, you know, that's just one way it's, it's implemented. It's a quick and easy way to, to know what you're up against as far as budgeting for the years to come. So this way it's not a huge burden on the town. You could break it up in a couple of years. Um, situations like that, it's most applicable. And, you know, financially, it's the, uh, it's the way to go to help out. Um, but to touch a little more upon the emerald ash borer, if, if you see any trees that look like it's been freshly uh, chewed up or it's, all its bark is missing or all fell off, that's what you're looking at. It's, the term is called blonding. It's woodpeckers just taking off all the bark, exposing the vascular tissue, looking for these insects. And literally it's decimating the population of ash trees in North America right now to the point where it's becoming an endangered species to the kind of to the, uh, the same effect as uh, American elms were about 10 years ago. They're going to wipe them out almost to, to uh, complete and there's going to be a couple stragglers to repopulate. And Kevin, because of issues like this, when we're replanting trees, um, is that part of the consideration when we're looking at multiple varieties of trees? So that way, you know, things, you know, you don't have a whole st a street lined with the same tree and potentially Absolutely. issues like this jumping from tree to tree. Absolutely. Uh, the term is called um, monoculture. You don't want to have a monoculture as far as plantings. You also don't want to have anything that's extremely susceptible to insects or pathogens. So what you do is you try to break it up typically between three to seven species in any given area of a township. So this way, if a pathogen or a fungal outbreak or uh, an insect outbreak, such as what we're dealing with happens, you kind of hedge your bet, you're not going to lose the whole percentage. If you only have, you know, say 20% of that species, it's much better than losing a nice maple lined street just because, you know, it does look good. Yes, but biodiversity always uh, rings in. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, and. Uh, It's about, uh, it's about it as far as the plantings. It's, uh, it's always really the, uh, the best thing to go by is right, right species and right place. Any questions for Kevin? We, we hope to, uh, oh, I see my neighbor online, Jack. Um, uh, we hope to do a planting this spring of approximately I don't know, Kevin, how many trees was it? Was it more than 70? Yeah, I Somewhere we, in that. I wanted to say we had a, uh, it was either 90 or 100. Some, it was somewhere right around there. Yeah, so we're, we'll be looking to do a big initiative plant this springtime. Um, we, we have found in the past that, uh, you know, let's talk about the plantings for a second. Um, you know, I mentioned, or Jay mentioned earlier that we, 
our ideal situation is that we have residents come forward and ask for a tree. But in lieu of that, we look for places to plant a tree. As you know, to be a good uh, citizen, the Shade Tree Commission does notify residents in advance of the plantings that, that, that they are have been slotted, that their right of way has been slotted for a tree. Um, and so we give people the opportunity to know in advance that that is coming as should they have any questions. And then uh, we, we've taken the extra step uh, during the plantings itself that Kevin will routinely follow the, uh, the contractor while planting and help address any questions that residents may have at the point that the tree is being installed. So Drea, if, if the residents get the letter um, and they decide there's issues like utilities and there's like a water sprinkler system, um, the town will work with them and you try and come to an agreement because we do need to put the trees in because um, it's really good for the environment and really for our carbon reduction in our town and, and being a good corporate environmental uh, steward to it. So. Um, yep. I know that's always been a question and um, yep. that, do you give a time frame in the letter that the residents need to get back to you? We do. we do, we do. We, we give enough lead time that the residents can contact the Shade Tree Commission with their concerns. And in that time frame, the concerns are reviewed by the commission as a whole. So, I mean, I've, I've had years where I've actually gone around and photographed each location that there was a concern about to use as um, part of the discussion process with the with the commission. I mean, we are a commission, so it is a group of individuals that are discussing these topics and, you know, coming to what the next steps will be. Um, so we, we do go through that process and then we will communicate with the resident through another letter about the, you know, what, whatever their concern is um, and next steps you know, whatever the next steps are, whether uh, we often get, or I'm trying to think of an example, there, there's not just one, but for, for example, where folks are concerned about their sidewalks, okay? Kevin already mentioned, we're putting in sidewalk, like root guards, right? To keep the roots, we're looking for trees that the roots are gonna go deep and we're putting in root guards so that the roots don't go wide, in which case there's impact to, the ash fall in the street or, or the, the resident's um, sidewalk. So for many of the concerns that people have had in the past, we've implemented solutions to, you know, you can never say everything's absolute, never gonna happen, but have, you know, we've implemented processes and, and added to the scope of our projects, items that drastically reduce the concerns that we've heard from residents in the past. And so we outline all of that for residents in our correspondence. That's great. And, and if I you. may, um, if I could add on to that, um, like I said before, it will always be uh, species specific. We're gonna look at the area. We're not just gonna put an oak tree under the wires and, and hope for the best. Um, ornamental trees will be used if if the area is right for it and also if the area is not right for a tree we're not going to put it there we're not going to try to put something and waste the money and time and effort to something that we can't get a product out of we're trying to look for longevity not just to put something out there and, and say we did it um, we'd like to see all these trees you know ideally outlive us it's for future generations not for us so here, and that, that's the first slide that Jay showed us. I mean, the, the trees that we're planting today are really for our future generations. It's, you know, we, the, the trees that we plant are, uh, how many inches in caliber, Kevin? Three inches, four inches, if it's that? The, the biggest we can typically get in there. Some streets differ, but yeah, it's usually three inches at the best, so, sometimes four. So you're talking a three to four inch in diameter trunk right? And then the height of the tree is probably like maybe six, six and a half feet. And, you know, th these are uh, trees that, that uh, 
as Kevin pointed out, like, like, because I've been with Kevin when we've been looking at spaces, you know, if there are wires, uh, electrical wires, telephone wires and poles, you know, there's, there are certain trees that are chosen that will stay underneath those wires and, you know, just, um, and then versus locations that have no wires and maybe can hold a tree that over time will be bigger and a bigger canopy. Yeah, and exactly. We'll, we'll try our best with, with species and we'll also go the extra step. I mean, some arborists don't look at it, but uh, sterilize trees so they're not dropping seeds. Um, you know, sweet gum trees, you can get them sterilized. So this way there's not a mess. It's not an added on cost for the town to be cleaning it up either. Um, it's a win-win. Um, you know, you can get oak trees that don't have large acorns, stuff like that. It's just little things that, I'll, you know, we all will work with the resident to make it as you know, pleasant as possible. I have a couple of questions. May I ask them now? Is now okay? Yes. Okay. What is, um, like if someone did want a tree, is there a choice? Uh, does the Shade Tree Commission say, well, would you rather have this tree or that tree? Assume, you know, I'm assuming the Shade Tree Commission already knows which trees go best where, as Kevin mentioned, right? But is there ever choice as to the selection? And then my second question was with the root cards. I don't know much, uh, well, I don't know anything. Tonight's the first night I ever heard of tree root cards. <laughs> So I'm totally ignorant, but so when you put the root guards in the tree, does that in any way diminish the stability of the trunk as it grows? And my third question is, since we're looking for trees that the roots go deep, I believe you said, what about the fact that the roots can grow into the pipes under the grounds? And if that occurs, Who's responsible and how does that work? So those are my three questions. <laughs> um, so, so um, Kevin, I'm going to ask you to help on some of this, but um, in terms of a quote choice, so when we when we do do plantings, Kevin does for each planting selects uh, Kevin what like four or five different varieties of trees, so and we typically well, yep. Yeah, we'll do do three ornamentals and three shade trees. So this way, there's three different uh, selections. So we're keeping biodiversity for not only the sides where we can plant with no wires, but as well as the ones with wires. So like I mentioned before, we're not creating a monoculture. We're hedging our bets. And this way, yes, you do get a choice. I'll let you know what they are. So this way, you know, I, I don't want to say it like this, but for the residents that want to be, you know, engaging in it and, you know, meet with me and we'll figure it out. Yeah, if it, it works better for your property and it makes you happier and you're going to take care of it. Awesome. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to, I mean, we're all more than happy to, to not only meet in the middle, but go further if, if that's the case. All right, then the next question was about the root guard. So Kevin, I'll let you talk, take the root guard question. Yeah, this, this, is a, this is a tough one. Um, I don't want to take up everyone's whole night with this, but uh, I'm, I'll make it really, really short if I can. Um, the limiting factor for roots is two things. It's genetics of the tree and it's the environment. Um, when roots, when the meristematic tip of a root hits something such as plastic, when you bought them from the, the nursery, Say you got like impatient flowers, uh, impatience, not, not like they're impatient, but uh, if uh, you see them, they're spinning around in circles in the bottom of that when you plant, that's becoming root bound. Um, the only thing that stops a root is basically something that it can't penetrate. So if it hits clay, it hits a ton of uh, cement and asphalt from the, the guys that did the road. Um, you know, there, there's a hundred of different examples, a rock, um, just pure water. So if a root doesn't get oxygen, water, and nutrients, it won't go there. If, if the whole thing is clay, it won't go through it just because there's no oxygen. Um, not to beat a dead horse, but the root guards will deflect the roots and make them go basically horizontal with the street, staying more contained to the 
the curb stripping. The roots are going to go where they want eventually anyway, but when they go under the sidewalk, what happens is they can't go down. There's really no way for it to. It's just compressed, uh, compressed soil with concrete and crushed up stone. It doesn't want to. So what it typically wants to do is it wants to skip right across it, lift the sidewalk slab up, and go into your front lawn where you're watering it, it has nutrients, and it's, it's basically like everything it needs. Um, so the root guards are, are not only a, a deterrent for it to go directly under your sidewalk and lift, but it, it's trying to train it to go horizontally with the street. Does it, you know, you said, does it uh, unstate or destabilize it? No, uh, the roots will grow with the canopy of the tree. Cool. You can't, I'm sorry? So it doesn't, it doesn't in any way um minimize the stability of the tree no no not at all uh the, the okay. tree it, it's just like us um you know our legs would grow with our body typically well that's what i was thinking of and it's like if certain people have certain shoes on it, it impacts their stability you know like in a, <laughs> exactly this way versus this way it impacts your stability so you know i just didn't know if you're forcing roots to go away they don't want to go does it impact the stability of the tree itself so telling yeah. me no so that's fine but look, like look I said, i'm totally ignorant about this so no no please no yeah. that's that's, that's uh, hey you know we're, i was ignorant at one point too it's it's you know i knew nothing about it but um to to segue to the third question um you're saying uh you know the roots grow with the the tree if you take a healthy tree, say, you know, a healthy tree in your front lawn, take the canopy, put it on a, on a, a flat surface, a two-dimensional grid, and multiply it by three. That's where your root system is for that tree. So the first third. third, 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 third. That hurt. Uh, the first third is basically what they call to the drip line. That's your stability of the tree. Those are those are all the buttress roots. That's what anchors the tree into the ground. The, the, you know, the, next, uh, the next third is just the connecting, the connecting roots to the uh, fine fibrous roots. Those are the ones that are going into your sewers, going into crevices. It's basically the, the diameter of our hair. Those are the searching roots looking for nutrients. They're everywhere. So when people say, you know, I have a tree in my sewer line, if your neighbor has a tree in their front lawn, that tree is in your sewer line as well. Their reach isn't just strictly under their branches and a little bit further. Like I said, flatten it to a two-dimensional grid and multiply by three. That's where your root system is for a healthy tree. Um, as far as sewers go, if there's a hole in a sewer line, it's, it's perfect. It's mother nature's you know, gift. Here you go, here's nutrients, oxygen, and water, and it will never run out and it won't freeze on you. So the tree is, is going right for it. Um, unfortunately, it's, you know, it's infrastructure. It's, it's not a good thing to a homeowner. Um, you know, I, don't, I don't know what else to say about that, but the roots will search out a hole in a pipeline. They won't, right. cause, they won't cause a hole in a pipeline. They'll only go after pre-existing damage. Well, and I think what you're saying too, Kevin, is it really um, any tree on anyone's property could be impacting sewer lines. And as part of when we're doing our plantings, um, uh, I believe that we are looking, you know, uh, we, we mark out where there are utilities to try to not put, you know, to, to the best that we can avoid putting trees too close to the utilities. Is that right, Kevin? Yeah, no, no self-respecting tree company or arborist will ever plant a tree on top of a, a utility mark out after this, you know, the state told us that there's a pipe or a line there. Um, it's just not good practice. Um, it's just industry, industry etiquette. If there's not a spot to typically plant because there's utilities, we just won't plant because we're going to run into problems because eventually we're going to have to stump grind that tree. And if it's on top of a gas line or a water line, it's just more liability. You're setting yourself up for failure. 
So, no, we, I mean, never will we plan on top of a, a utility markup. Yeah, and, and there's also regulations state from the BPU that you're not allowed to be anywhere near the utility lines. There's certain distances too. Does anybody else have any additional questions? This has been great, guys. So I think we're at the time um, of doing the raffle. All right. So um, I am going to raffle off three, as I said, I am I went from one to three, <laughs> shade tree sweatshirts to the first three people that in the chat answer the following question correctly. How many total volunteers are there on the shade tree commission? Keep trying. Total volunteers. Does everybody want to do a second guess? Because they were so far that I can see were not correct. All right. Um, none of the answers were correct. <laughs> So I'm going to give everybody a second chance, and it is under 10. Try again. There are a certain number of actual commissioners and then a certain number of alternates. The two together equal. Holly and Lisa got it right. Elizabeth Barker got it right. OK, those are our first two. And then Luann. All right, we got our three winners. Um, if you can put in your in the chat the um, sizes that you would like, we can get those down to, well, you can either pick them up at my house on the porch or we can drop them off at Borough Hall. Um, probably better to pick them up at my house, uh, which I'm happy to, if you are all on Facebook, you can private message me at Drea Lobosco, D-R-I-A. No, you don't, Luann, do you know how to do that? She's walking away. Um, just let me know, this is a size medium. I'm like normally a medium. Uh, they, they're they really nice, a little embroidery on the side. Uh, but just because of COVID, it might just be easier to pick, pick up the sweatshirt on my porch. And again, my, you can private message me at Drea, D-R-I-A, Lobosco, L-O-B-O-S-C-O. And just let me know your size and then I will leave them on my porch and I'll leave you my address and you can pick them up. Does that work, Raina? That works so great. We, so so we let Luann, me know. Um... Who was it? Luann, Holly and Lisa. And um, I think Holly and Elizabeth. Lisa hopefully is one person and Elizabeth Barker. So yeah. for the group, there's seven total, five commissioners and two alternates. So I just wanna um, launch where we're going next after this week. So the next slide. So next Tuesday, we will be having a presentation on holistic nutrition for life immune health with Robin Germers and she has uh, been participant at our green fair uh, and then February 9th we've got composting and container gardening and one of our favorites so it's a hot ticket February 24th is birding 101 and March 2nd we have on Hawthorne history <coughs> March 9th is the bears resource management about bears March 16th we have plug-in stations this is electric vehicle stations and March 23rd, we have Hawthorne's recycling program. And March 30th is a Lyme disease. And rounding out the finale is the virtual bird walk, April 6th. So um, please join us. All programs start at 7.30. And you know, thank you all for making Hawthorne a greener, better place to live and work. And all our, I don't know why that went, all our uh, information is on the uh, Barrow's website, Green Team, or it's on our Facebook with events and information. But I just wanna thank everyone for coming out tonight and thank you to Drea and Jay and Kevin 
and you know their team, the commission, and both commissions work very closely together. Um, I'm very excited about the iTree inventory. That is awesome because you are a big partner with us when we file for our sustainable jersey certification. So a lot of points come out of your uh, your commission, Drea, and we're very pleased to work with you. And um, Hopefully we will see you at the next Green Fair lecture next Tuesday. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed this. It's been great. And um, hopefully I'll see everyone next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you.